it has been quite of a change, I have to say. Uh, the first couple of weeks was a bit like we felt super lost from not having a schedule to follow. And then we started thinking, like putting our uh, own schedule together and following it also together with the Royal Ballet Company. They, hold, they have been giving us classes through Zoom, ballet classes, yoga classes, Pilates and all sorts, which has been so helpful to keep us busy and still fit. Uh, a, you know to a certain extent um and yeah besides that just trying to you know do other things you know I'm, i've been playing the piano which is something that i almost didn't have enough time to do with all the the performances and rehearsals and other things or the interests of you know ours i think it's been a great time to explore the fields as soon as this hits i kind of went into panic mode because of all the children I, I teach and I didn't want them to feel lost so I immediately started teaching on Zoom I think ahead of most people because I have a lot of children that do have some kind of issues or unstable homes that I really wanted to help them and support them and, and let them know that I was there for them no matter what so I started straight away teaching on Zoom and didn't even actually think about myself at all. And although I had this, the quote from Dickens rolling and rolling around in my head, and this, and I was in a terrible state of panic, I think internally, because obviously doing what I do, and as a mother, suddenly I had no income left, and yet felt responsible for all these children all over the place that had no classes to go to and I know some of them it's what they love most I have some deaf children that I teach ballet to and I teach dance to on a Monday morning and I know they love it and I felt very sad for them that I was kind of abandoning them and this sense of panic but then I think because I, I you know I was perfectly happy at home I love having time with my children so it, we sort of just can, fell into this natural rolling continuation of life, just with lots and lots of baking. Although I couldn't get any shopping. I couldn't <laughs> get any shopping because I don't have time or the resources to stockpile. And that was a major, a major panic point for me. And, but yeah. once I was over that... I, I think as a creative, I think I've been a choreographer my whole life. I come up with ideas continually and any situation in life for me is, I see it as a dance. And it started off, you know, the days I, I had this row, this on sort of replay, what you call it, on replay, this track in my head, which was, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. I was thinking, and I, I would fight with it going, gosh, how grim, why have I got this rolling around my head? And plus, I have some very dear friends in Italy and that were very worried about not only me, but the whole of England going, you know, you really need to get a grip and get, in, get off, stop working, go home. And one day I got a message saying from a friend just saying, all I wish I could have is a hug. And I thought, yes, wouldn't it be amazing just to reach out to somebody that you want to see and give them that hug? And so then I was thinking of how many people there must be in the world feeling that they just want a hug. And I think at that point, I, I started with this other track in my head, which is that reach out and touch somebody. It's that really cheesy song, but it was there. And I was teaching on Zoom, as I've already mentioned. And I thought, actually, all I want to be able to do is reach, if I could reach through the screen and pass somebody a message you can pass messages through the screen even though we can't physically touch each other you can still transmit that energy and that's when I sort of had this idea um, to do this piece and see <laughs> if it would be possible to get dancers all over the world that would join with me to send this message of love and unity around the world because that's the other track in my head was that's all the world that needs is, is love and that's what everybody needs right now yeah especially it's it's it was a great great idea when you got in touch with me as well because then i thought how it's not just how about how the act, artists 
feel about this whole situation, but all going to the theatre and performing to so many elderly people and how much joy you give to so many people every day in every performance being the theatre or or even like going to the cinemas or something like that and cutting all that it's you know the connection you've created it's not just in between the dancers and you as a choreographer and the artist but now sharing this um information and sharing this film and this idea and these feelings is just it's also helping a lot the people that haven't been in touch with with the arts haven't been there to watch and enjoy what we have to offer so it's literally just bringing everyone together again and it's um it's very special and yeah it's a great idea to put that together yeah so our first meeting was through a zoom chat um uh, through my old school uh petit dance school of dance in rio de janeiro um, she got my contact and we arranged. We were all already so open to each other and just met at 10 a.m. in the morning. I had kind of like had a coffee kind of ready. And we all, all of a sudden she shared her idea and I really straight away really liked it. You know, I'm, I'm one of those people that, you, you know, you feel the connection straight away or you don't. And I did feel that with Ruth. And... In like 20 minutes, at 10, 20, we were already up. I was up in my room, kind of like moving. And she was like, oh, how about this and how about that? And it was quite crazy because then we, we finished the conversation. And then I sent her a message. Yeah, I've agreed to do this project because it felt so nice. But what is it all about again? Like, it literally felt like we had already known each other for so long and as soon as we clicked on that zoom chat we started already sharing our ideas and our feelings and movement which is yeah i'm thing. gonna jump into that's actually when i sort of changed it from the original brief because i had a different it was it was going to be slightly different um it was the way it was going to be built and then i had this meeting with Mayara and it did I, I it was really weird just before the meeting I go a lot on my gut instinct I have a lot of I I'm now listening to learning to listen to the little voice and before it I just thought actually I'm going to drop I'm not going to talk about the concept and something in my head was saying okay forget the concept just have the meeting and so and I did and I, and I met and I met you and it was really weird I felt like I've known you forever <laughs> and it was that amazing connection that I had already been meeting a lot of people over Zoom, but when we met, I really felt like I've known you forever. And it was totally unexpected, especially on Zoom. You get this sort of artist thing where you, you know, you hug and you, and you kiss and everybody's friends because you're working towards an end goal. But I'd never had that level of connection with somebody over Zoom. And actually, that's when I, I think I got back to you and I said, actually, I want to change it. Do you think we could make you the kind of main person in it? And I want you to sort of gather the energy of the world and keep everybody going because that's what this time is about it's about keeping other people going and that's what our message is is that you know we can get through it and there is an end and so the kind of the brief kind of got thrown out and it got rewritten as we went along also throughout this the conversation we had loads of chats through whatsapp as well and you know, sometimes, especially when the person had the idea about the project, you feel a little bit like you shouldn't really say very much about it because it's it is the artistic opinion of uh, the person, the producer, whoever is leading it. But we were always chatting and like exchanging thoughts and like, oh, don't you think this will be better? What do you think about this being this way? Oh, this is nice. This is not. And it was, yeah, it was nice all the way. So very pleasant um, journey we had up until getting this film together and I hope that the message and all this energy and positivity that we had on the way of building it and putting it together will be also sent out as well as the message of you know being with the person that's there watching. Yeah I absolutely absolutely it was incredible actually when we met to film it um to film Myra's piece in in the sort of for the different sections as it was really it was really quite crazy because the other people i haven't met them that we i've rehearsed with them over zoom 
and then they sometimes send me a clip and say what do you think can we have another rehearsal and then they send it back but with you we were there together in our social distancing <laughs> And um, with a silent, silent London at the early, early hour of the morning. And it really was quite special. And I really hope we've captured what we were both feeling. And I know other people around the world that are part of this have really enjoyed the process as well and have felt that. I don't think I will ever forget the day that I, I think I was a moment late arriving on my Zoom and I turned on the Zoom and there were seven girls waiting for me in Jamaica. And that was really quite emotional and quite mind blowing that these people there and they felt so special to be in it. And that's what it's about. People coming together to create something to pass that feeling. And hopefully that message is transmitted and that feeling because obviously it can't be a great choreographical work because we're traveling the world very quickly with this energy that is so beautifully captured there in the middle as you'll see and transmitted on and forwards and so you can't create a whole you know ballet it's got to be snippets and it has to be and I did keep telling people it's all about you know the feeling and pass on the feeling and see how you feel to me no matter what i'm working on i think perhaps it comes from years of being told how you should look how you feel where your hand should be where your little finger is that whatever i create and it's more so with this than ever before i wanted people to feel i wanted people to believe what they were doing to feel what they were doing and that's why you know it was so wonderful for working with you and being able to ask you your opinion and, and have your input because that makes it the real thing it is rather than you know a sort of performance yeah, piece it, and put out a there lot, a lot more special doesn't it especially like when you get the the whole, whole the aesthetics about it all you know how you how you just like you said how you should look and you just go and concentrate on how you should feel and for us dancers, sometimes that's not really the main situation because you have a choreography to follow and hard steps technically. And so it's nice to just go back to very simple and be just yourself, try to feel like yourself whenever you're creating and as natural as you can possibly be, just as human-like because everything got stripped out from you, you know, your studio, your proper floor, you can't put punches on in the concrete. So it's like they've taken every, everything from you as a dancer, as an artist, but what are you left with? And it's, that's when the idea and feelings come. And then, and that's, that's just a whole new level of choreography, I find. It was quite a challenge, but I rem when I chatted about that, what am I going to be wearing? What am I going to do with Ruth? She was so open about just be yourself, just wear whatever you feel like you, you want to wear and feel, you know, free. And, and it, it all, I think everything's going to come across in that, you know, in the sense of, you know, human, like, like bringing yourself into your, into your, how you are as a human and a person is stripping everything out. It, it, it was a bit scary, I have to say, and it has been, because for us ballet dance especially, we just need so much around us, kind of like helping everything, you know, to happen. Um, meaning floor, proper floor, proper bar, prop, you know, everything. And now I've been just like dancing on my wooden floor downstairs, just laid the line you know, down. And my bar is actually very low because it's my worktop, the, my, my kitchen island. So it's like everything is, you know, adapting and just trying to concentrate and focus in more, you know, what's above us, which is, you know, wanting to do something and wanting to make something special happen. So it's been also a learning process for us dancers, I have to say. Hopefully we can take it back to the stage once we're back. All this freshness about finding and discovering about ourselves. And I think that is the most important thing that we can take back with us once everything is over. <laughs>
the whole way through this virus, um, right from the get-go, there was this whole thing about you have you have to wear masks, don't be out without a mask. And I would hear it from friends in other countries around the world. And then you had all this conflicting stories and conflicting news from scientists or the World Health Organization. You should wear a mask, you should not wear a mask. And that's why every now and again, they're wearing a mask or, or they're not wearing a mask. Because, and, you're, and our masks in the, in the film are just our hands because a lot of people couldn't even find a mask if they were even told to wear one. Um, so, and that's what it's like. And then obviously that hand on your heart is, that's the most important thing. And that's what keeps us all alive is our heartbeat. And that's what the love and the energy we want to send around. Um, and so it comes in and, and, and you take the message and you bring it to your heart and it's your heart that's, that's beating because without our heartbeats, we, we are nothing. And then everybody translates the movement into the way they do it. If you see, there's um, the wonderful Stan in Vancouver, who, who um, he, he comes from a, a folk dance. Um, I probably said that wrong. And so it's not, it's totally opposed to um, the classical ballerinas who bring it in and they're very, very classical. Um, so it's the same kind of feeling and translated. And I wanted to make it personal to each dancer that was very important because we all feel love and the situation slightly differently that's why even though it's similar it's never exactly the same because no no two people will feel any situation in the same way uh it has been different a different experience and uh to try different movements uh out of the classical work you know, aesthetics, um, but it has, it, like we were saying before, it's just about how would you feel about, you know, it's like you're covering your heart and you're covering your mouth. And that's like the two things that like, so has to be so aware at the moment, like you still pulsing, you still get gathering energy with anything that you see on the internet by like looking at a video or reading something inspiring, and then you're passing it on. And that's what we're doing by getting together and um you know putting this film together so yeah i feel like my interpretation is just i just try to be myself i actually haven't really seen the video <laughs> i have to go and have a little look and check i've seen my past and i've seen a few posts on instagram and um, i'm well excited to watch it actually and yeah well there's a bit where you take in where she brings in so in the middle of it you'll see her she collects all the energy um from everybody so far and she's bringing it in and it's it's almost and she's playing with the energy of the world um yeah. and then passes it on and in the end we we played around with what she did quite a bit and together as we said um and you she takes flight the end bit actually came up on the spot we uh, as i think you've seen me do before i will change things a million and one times and in little details and we were in this fabulous setting in the park with all the sounds of the park and we were playing with it and in the end you'll see how she literally is free and takes flight and that's how we want people to know they will get through this and you will carry on I feel incredibly honoured by all the dancers that have wanted to work with me on this and bring their unique beauty and feeling to this is, has made it an incredible journey um, across crazy amount of time zones and language barriers. Um, I, I love, I adore languages, but um, I don't speak nowhere near as many to understand everybody in this film and so actually in China I did have a translator as well and but a lot of it we just worked out between us with sort of as we do with as dancers and creatives by movements and you and it, it is we have we speak a global language which is dance and dance crosses any boundaries and any race it just shouldn't it that shouldn't ever be something that we even have to discuss because there should be no boundaries to anything 
and I think that's also must be must be sucked in and I know my wonderful dancer here tonight will agree with me that that actually has to be also part of it that it has to be it's that unity of everybody anywhere in the world yeah there, um, there is a thing is one uh, we different races we all one aren't we and I feel like the theater has already is so much further than any other um type of you know business or anything because we have literally brought so many people together no matter what their color their race in every company you see a wide range of ethnicity and it's not a thing anymore for us and like that's why i feel like this whole situation and the protests and um it, it just it hurts me a lot because I already live in a world where I don't see that much of a difference, but there's so, so much still going on out there. And it, it's really, really upsetting to realize that. Um, but us artists, we have embraced every race uh, for so many years and have put things together and projects together. And in the companies you have people from all over the world that um, I feel like we, we are almost ahead of, of all uh, other sectors yeah. and I feel very proud of you know to say that the Royal Ballet we have all sorts of ethnicities and in every single company I'm sure Ruth will you teach people from all over the world and there's no such thing as you know choosing you your worth or, or, of doing it and, you, and you're not there's really art has none of that and and yeah, it's just sad that it's still happening around the world in other sectors, but we, we're in the process of changing it. And it's not something that's going to happen now. It's something that's going to take generations to, to get better. But I already feel like we are, as artists, doing the right thing as, you know. Yeah, we yeah are I think definitely, definitely. And in the Royal Ballet Company, you do really see that it has changed and it has moved yeah. on. Um, actually, but... I feel, and I do find it incredibly sad that there's still, I happen to pick up, I have this book of letters that change the world. And I happened to pick up one the other day and um, it was about, it was written by Rosa Parks. And I was just, and it was on about the Black Lives Matter movement then. I was just thinking, isn't it atrocious that people still, of fighting and having to draw attention to the same things and it's a very sad world and I think unfortunately there are companies that don't aren't as broad-minded and aren't as with it as they should be and that has come more to light in the last few days and I, I think it's terribly it's it's heartbreaking we're meant to be back in in four weeks so we at the moment having our summer holiday and but being back with all the government rest restrictions and the amount of people that will be able to be in the room and but they still want to kind of like use the time and the space to choreograph and so uh, a few choreographers our resident choreographers will be pushing for something like that but only very small groups so it, it, we have no prediction of when we're going to be performing again so it's it's just going to be really weird um, to go back into this new schedule that the company is going to have to put together, considering all these uh, the government gu guidelines. Um, and I feel like the the idea of putting films together is really what's going to reach out at the moment and for the next six months, a year, even films and things that you can you know respect all the the distance and all the gu guidelines will be really the thing that will will project the most for a period of time and yes i think it, it's going to be exciting because i feel like every dancer is experiencing something special and and different during this time during this like self-isolation and um we will we will be like completely different people whenever we get together and be in a room for a full call for a ballet that you know involves 40 people and we'll be dancing around each other or there the back in the in the line of swan lake just you know one this this, <laughs> this close from each other um, we will really appreciate those moments i feel um but yeah it will be interesting to see as as artists how we're gonna 
get back into it and how much we're gonna have to offer um you know we're gonna come from different spokes into a center again and we'll have so many experiences to like build and share but i think you know like we were talking so we were talking about gaga people you introduced me to the the live online and, and i've been loving it and we were also talking about one thing i've noticed is there's going to be people that have really grown and like yourself have been trying and exploring yourself and i really believe that a, a, a dancer or an actress that's knows themselves and has has spent time exploring themselves and exploring other things is a far greater performer because the performance you give and the emotions they're far more real and, and you can yeah. embody a character with greater depth and greater personification or greater feeling mm -hmm. and so i really believe that artists will actually come out of this real true artists will come out of this mm -hmm. a lot better and obviously some people will find they found a completely different path and that's all right too i think it's a it's also been a great time for people to discover themselves perhaps sharing these moments with them as well makes them feel part of it and makes them feel you know they will they sympathize and they will and want to help and they will want to still come and watch us it's almost like feeding like i was saying mental health is so important especially when you get isolated from people that you love and people that usually spend time around i just imagine all those people that you know went to the theater twice a week and you know had this connection with uh with arts and even museums like you, you've got everything you know taken everything away from from all the enjoyment and all the entertainment from the people. So it's really, really important. Little films like that and performance that we put online for people to watch to keep them, you know, interested and also, you know, happy and entertained because it's, it's all about being healthy also mentally. And it's a very important thing as artists to keep that going um, somehow. And I feel like we have been doing a lot of, about it and through internet thank god this happened this pandemic happened in a moment where we can collaborate and interact through the computer it's not the same but it is it has uh, yeah it has been helping a lot i think and um, i feel you know so blessed almost that i've met all these people and i think probably my mental health has been saved a lot by the, the, my times are on in zoom and chats on whatsapp with these people i have met so i can only be grateful um of all this and of this time because i wouldn't have had this idea if it hadn't if it had not been for this we wouldn't have met i wouldn't yeah. have met and worked with any of the dancers around the world perhaps i would have done one day perhaps we would have met but maybe down the line and it has been amazing to have jump on this journey with so many dancers wanting to share the same message and that has been a wonderful experience and something i will actually always treasure about this the people i've met and being able to create this to send it around the world and to send love to all their families and all our friends and all the people we've never met that might watch this and i hope you know like there's a girl she was in jamaica she said we'd had a chat and when she sent me this message back she said you know like we were saying if one person feels happier because what we've made well then we've done a good job and i think i couldn't sum it up better that no matter how isolated you feel there is always somebody there to help you and you just need to reach out or take somebody's hand, reach back and say, look, I need help. And there will always be, I hope. People will always see that there is always somebody somewhere that will be willing to listen or help them. From this moment, I feel like, because we've had a lot of time to develop, um, you know, ourselves as, as, as a person, 
it's just like trying to do everything you do at your best and trying to be the best version of yourself and people appreciate a lot more the the contact and the interaction once we allowed to again but also something that they can even take away from us is uh, learning something new every day and we have in any moment this pandemic means that we've stopped learning and this movie shows that we have and we have still been meeting people and creating connections and collaborating and learning something new every day helping one helping the other helping ourselves to stay healthy mentally so it's it's just you know being positive and reach out like ruth said reach out for help for love and there will be someone there that will give it to you that will help you to get it the the royal academy of dance that i've been part of pretty much my whole life so far has members all around the world and i wondered how they were coping not only as members as individual people but also the red at managing to keep everybody going and keeping and that was a very important aspect starting this um going into lockdown was thinking about people being isolated and these big membership organizations like the red having like also everybody looks to them to keep them going and so um through a meeting with the artistic director um, they they said they would help and support it, and so that is also that's how I met a lot of the people worldwide, is thanks to them. And the RED has always had a special part in the in the whole world for dance, and yeah, so that that that's how that connection came about was also their supporting of their members worldwide. 